Okay, my friends, this is what it's come to. Listen to this now. This is a nuclear explosion, mid-air. Now, the one I normally show is on the ground level, and, and it just burns the house up. It doesn't go anywhere, and then it hits it and slams it over. What we're going to see is a brilliant explosion, and then we're going to see elect electrical current going to the earth. And I'm going to try to explain the filaments coming up from the earth, and then the blast going into the earth. Now, it's, it's running at a very, very slow speed. Here it goes. So again, the Lawrence Livermore, boom, it goes off. Now I'm going to stop it right here. You see? Well, actually, I have to stop it a little earlier. This is the explosion ball. It was up in the air. These spikes are headed towards the earth. Now, before we get here, let me back it up just a smidge. All right, now watch that where they, they emanate from the earth up. Watch. I'll try to get it exact. Okay, now, this is, you see that going down? That is what's called a whistler wave. Now watch. Boom. You see these? They're starting already. They're coming up. That's not coming down. These are coming up to meet these, which is a very interesting phenomenon. All right, see them coming up? I sort of understand why this is so symmetrical. And I'll try to explain it. All right. Obviously, you see the big one is right in the center. And you got the Whistler wave going, because it's a, it's a magnetic wave going in front of it. It has nothing to do with mass. Inside, and this has nothing to do with mass either. This is all electricity. This is just the white part. The black part is inside, and when it hits, whew, this does a hell of a job too, but watch. The reason the white is being coming down here so desperately is Earth is the ground. It wants electricity. All electricity want to do is get the ground. Lightning, pew, static, snap. Electricity right through you to ground. It wants to be into the ground. That's the nature of electricity. Earth has a lot of dark matter in it, and dark matter sucks white. Now watch. Boom, it's coming down. See these little tags? Very interesting. Watch when it hits the ground. Boom. Now, that's... That's electricity going into the ground. You're not seeing a, a major explosion right here. Not until you get to the dark matter. Well, it's, it's, well let's sit, watch. You see it? It's, it's, it's getting in there now. Now we're starting to get some dark matter hitting. Before, all we had was the electricity. There's no mass. All right. Now, boom, we're hitting... All of a sudden, bada bing. Now we got some serious issues going on. Because that dark stuff is primarily, well, it's going to be matter in a second. It's still mostly electricity. The matter is just now beginning to hit the earth. And when it does, it's not good. It's not good at all. It just becomes a turmoil on the earth, just absolute, fanatically turmoil. Huh. And it's just, it's just a nightmare. Huh. Now the dark matter is hidden. Before there was no dark matter hitting you. You see it? Now the dark matter is really crushing in. Look at this. Isn't that horrifying? Look at that. Are they supposed to be bragging they can do this? I guess I guess you want your enemies to know you could do this. I don't know. The way the world is now, I just don't know anymore. You ever can't trust anybody? Everybody's scared of everybody else? They make a bigger, bigger, bigger bombs? How many times can you blow up the earth? I don't know. They'll probably figure that one out. All right, pay attention to this. This is something that is interesting. There's a little tiny hill right here. And electricity wants to go to ground, and the quickest path to ground is the highest point. Now, two things to take into consideration. It's going to hit this hill. 
When it does, it doesn't explode it because it's just electricity. It, it glows, but it doesn't explode like, like, you know, boom, like that. It just invades, just like it invades the house. Watch. Here it comes down. It's getting closer and closer. It's heading for that hill. See it jump down at it? Boom. It's going to snap now. I'm going to stop right there. It's like almost raining. It's not exploding. That hill is not, it, it, there's no explosion. This is the closest point to the electricity, so it's invading. Now, I'm going to click probably stop, go and stop. Here it goes down a little more. You see it? It's just barely digging in. You know, that's, this is glow of energy. That's not explosion of matter. This is, well, you see, glow of energy. This is the glow of the energy concussing with the fields that are on the ground. That's not an explosion. You see? No explosion there. It's just, it's just an interaction of fields, which always creates a white layer. Field to field, always created, but no explosion. The explosion comes out here. When the dark matter hits, then you got your explosion. Now, I think I understand what's going on here, but the symmetry is just stunning. But I guess that's what you would expect. Like these are coming out, and these coming out over here, and this one in the middle. I would expect that would probably be the outcome. Because the Earth, it really, really, really wants to suck these electrons down. It's gravity. It literally is gravity. These are nothing more than particles of black pushing the white. The white isn't just, well, this is where it gets tricky. The white is literally drawn to the black. But in this case, the black is up in here too, pushing the white down to the ground. So it's not just being attracted like gravity, sort of falling. It's being pushed up here by the explosion and gravity's pulling at the same time. And then the fields compress and then and then the dark matter comes and that's when you saw the wipeout. But this is, uh, this pretty much as far as I'm concerned shows my electron flood theory is quite obviously correct. That this is completely white energy, and then the dark energy follows it afterwards, which I showed you in the other atomic bomb blast, where the house goes, well, the house just smokes up, and then the house goes. I, the dipole flood, dipole electron flood theory is just, just what has to be. It just it works at flawlessly for anything. If you can confront me with any, I mean anything, I don't care if it's biological, I don't care what it is. It's everything is done by half-lives in biology, all right? So you, when you, you need enzymes to brrr, break things up and th those are the half-lives and they get put back together, all right? It's all about dipoles. It's all about dipoles, little tiny dipole electrons. And they build everything up and an enzyme does up to billions, I think they say, or at least millions of times per second, something it would take years to do if it wasn't for the enzyme. So there's a lot of stuff to consider here, but you have to understand all of it. You have to understand the chemistry, the biology, physics, electronics, electrons, dipoles, all gravity. You have to understand the layering of the atmosphere. The thermosphere, how hot it is out there, thousands of degrees outside of our, way at the top of our atmosphere, thousands of degrees. And then it gets below zero, 100 to lo below zero, just below that. And then it gets hot down on the surface of the Earth. And this outside layer is getting hotter. That means this layer is getting colder. That means our layer is getting hotter. That's what, that's what global warming is about. It's not just about too much carbon in the air. It's about too much expansion. And burn, baby, burn is not going to help. We need to be juice, baby, juice. Electricity. And I have shown that we can accelerate light. We've created the sterile muons, electron showers, and this is the raw energy you need. And you should be able to put it in a little tiny shoebox like that. It's just a mock-up Geiger counter. But it's something you can carry around like that. Plug it in anywhere you want. Have as much electricity as you want. This should create hundreds of times more 
in output than input. So you have to use a little bit of it to keep it going, and you got tons of excess. Carry it around, portable, cheap, I mean, right off the shelf stuff. In a couple of weeks, this could be out and working if I could get somebody with a couple of engineers, a nice little lab, they set up and they tune in the venturi just the right way so that they spray just the white and then they need to get some kind of a little harvester behind there to ex accept it just like a solar panel and that's it and then run it right down through a photodiode the gate it goes one way can't come back the other way you go into a battery or go right into your device and run your tires or whatever you want have a floating ground so that you can walk around with it just like you do any electric device now it has to have its own internal ground, floating ground, and a little tricky maybe with something of this amount of energy, because this could be just phenomenal amount. Something like that might be able to run your car. It might be able to power your whole house. It might even be able to power an airplane. The amount of energy that these things put out when you can break the white away from the black is staggering.